Okay, other bet is sponsored by Chavi uh, Lee in memory of Chavi's husband, Tanchum Ben Chaim, and in memory of Yosef Ben Yitzchak, uh, Mindy Barali, Luni Shmas, Asher Anshel Ben Shraga Five of Coin, anonymously in honor of the com- in honor of a Kurdish Baruch Hu, anonymously in honor of the beers one year on an anniversary, anonymously for a month of joy, healing, and celebration in our land for the continued protection of our Chayalim. And healing for all who needed by the Brenner's memory of Yitzhak Ben Nachman on his yurt site, by the Avram family in honor of their second uh, uh, anniversary on the yurt site of Shachar's uh, Saba Ruven Ben Avram, and by Sarah Gold for the Rufus Shlem of Esther Dania Bat Sarah, Chavi Yochev Bat Hadas Bat Sarah, Betoch Shachol Yisrael, and for the Pidyon Shuim, the Tzachon Yeshua of Am Yisrael. The week is sponsored by my in laws in honor of uh, two other birthday. Grand girls, granddaughters, Rachel Nechama and Ora Menucha, by uh, Sharon Alman in memory of Sharon's mother, Toiva Zelda Bazev Vechayachana, by Meira Goldberg Bartlev in memory of Jack Yaakov Peretz Ben Gershon Mayer, who we've we've mentioned his name so many times, not just this week. Yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, Jack? We miss him so much, so, so much on his fourth yard sign. We miss him so much. And uh, by Marilyn and Josh Adler for the safety of all the chayalim and the cat who's relieved Bezrat, Bezrat Hashem. I love, this is so beautiful. And you have to spend a few minutes to get to sponsorships. It's a very, it's a very, never gets old. Okay. Um, very important, the uh, before we start, which has to do mamash with... with um, with uh, the learning today is that there's going to be a Tehillim Mechulak. Um, we're going to give out Tehillim to, to complete Sefer Tehillim Bezrat Hashem after the learning, right after. We have something but pretty short to do, actually. It's not such a long piece. It's not such a difficult piece, but it ties in exactly to what, to what uh, today is all about. This is a piece from, uh, from, uh, from Rav Kluger that I wanted us to do today to tap into the Nishama of Tanya's Esther. We could pass these out. That is it. Kuflamid hey. Kuflamid hey. I wanted to do something today that would obviously have to do with Tani Tester and would, and would also uh, the Tani Tester of Tafshin Pei Dalid, which is a different Tani Tester. Lo haya Tani Tester kaze b'chaim shelanu. We never had a Tani Tester like that. Forget about Purim. Forget about we're not even we're not even by Purim yet, but we've never even had, we've never had a Tani Tester like we've had. Um, are there enough in the back? Are there more? more? Okay. It's very, it's very simple Hebrew today, so it really, uh, we're not going to be breaking our teeth so much. Tonight, I'm going to mention a few things. Um, tonight will be a special, special shear, which is more of a chana for Purim Tafshin Pei Dalit, 8 p.m. tonight for men and women here. And then Shabbos is Shabbos, <laughs> and then Motzei Shabbos we do uh, the, the kid the, the shul puts on the most incredible, I think one of the most incredible kids parties, uh, all in town, ta- you know. And this year it's going to be even deeper and better, and sweeter. Bezrat Hashem. And then afterwards we have a tish. Where's the tish this year? Upstairs, Upstairs right? Upstairs, yeah. And that's been very chazak, very deep and pnimi. And just to announce that, you know, we, we, every year we usually do suda in our house, but because of Shiputzim, we're doing suda upstairs in the social hall. I say that because from 4 p.m. Be'erich, uh, the doors open for everyone, and we go strong for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I, I just know that whatever ounce of Tosefet Kedusha of Purim we could do this year is mamash needed in the deepest, deepest, deepest way. So, but, but for right now, I just want to talk mm-hmm. about the moment that we're in right now, Tani Tester, which is a, a very, uh, it was a very emotional thing to see that so many people they t- took on Tani Tester this year. Um, not everyone fasts on Tani Tester. I'm not just talking, you know, I'm not speaking about in our circles, whatever in the world that word, that, that word means, our circles, but Tani Tester has been taken on now. It's like today's a, it's, it's spread throughout Am Yisrael in a very strong and passionate way. Not just that, but actually led by one of the top Israeli comedians, Guy Hochman. This Shabbos is being taken on by a lot of people that don't keep that don't keep Shabbos yet. So the Esrat Son, the gates are open, and everyone's you know Avo Elamelech. Everyone's just coming to the Melech. 
in the way that they're that they're able to. And that's what this is about also, trying to understand how to come to the Melech in this year in its own unique way. So of course, Vatikht of Esther, Esther Amalka for us, this year her or has to shine just just much stronger and brighter than it ever did. We need the light of Esther Amalka to shine in a way that's never shone before. Mamash. Shun, you say in the past? Not shined. Shun. Shun before. What Rav Kluger is going to show us is a very simple, simple, simple inyan when it comes, when it comes to what Amis, how Am Yisrael relates to when things are difficult. Things are things seem to kind of like always be difficult. <laughs> it's like we don't we don't need to be in the Arm right now to learn this teaching at all. Think, things things have a way. I don't know how this happens. Things have a way of being difficult. And then things have a way of not being difficult also. Amen. They do. <laughs> they have and they will. No much. The question is, when you look back at how things stopped being difficult, what would you point at as to what changed the whole thing? If you go into the story of Esther, of, of Megillus Esther, and you say, what was the thing that really changed things over? Rav Kluger says, if you have the right eyes to look at how the Megillah says what the Megillah points at to show you that things changed, you understand the secret of personal geula and Klal Yisrael geula. At what point did you say, this is what changed everything? And through the Megillah, you could say a million things. I mean, there are tzaddikim that say, what was the tipping point of Megillah's Esther? The word vayehi. Vayehi <laughs> bimei right? That, that's the, the word vayehi already is the tipping point. Ah, oh, you're telling me it's going to be bad. That means I know you're telling me it's going to be good, right? That's why the first word is Vayahi, right? So that's very, that's a very beautiful drush. And then it says, and then I saw someone else that says, oh, the tipping point was the word Bimei, which is the second word. And a whole drush and the gematria of Bimei, what is it, 62, whatever, a whole thing. You, you could do it everywhere and say, this was, this was the thing that tipped it over. But as a cloud, you didn't, we have a way of understanding what what really is the thing that changes things, what really tips things over. And that's why it's so kashur to the, getting together afterwards and, and doing the Tehillim today. So look inside on the bottom uh, piece where it says, Nes Purim B'Koyach Do you see it? In, the first page is Kuf Lamed He. Lech Knos Es Kol Yehudim. Rav Kluger says, V'chein Asa Mordechai. He listened to her. This is a very interesting pasuk. Let me ask you a question. What's so beautiful about this pasuk? You know, usually when you think about Mordechai and Esther, who's the Rebbe and who's the Chassid? Right? Who's, right? who's the Rebbe and who's the Chassid? Usually when we think about, you know, the story of the Megillah. So Mordechai is the Rebbe and Esther is the Chassid. No, not this pasuk. Vayas Mordechai, kechol hasher tzivta alav Esther. Esther is the rabbi, and Mordechai is the chassid. Mordechai is doing everything that Esther says, tells him to do. K'mo sh'amru chazal, Mordechai karat begadav. Bechol b'nei Yisrael hitkabtzu etzlo. Mordechai rips his, tears his clothes, all the yidin gather around him. V'amad Mordechai v'amar alem, en lanu melech shenismoch alav. We don't have a king. There's no David Malka Mashiach here. There's no Shlomo Melech. We don't have any king to run to. We also are in Galus. We have nowhere to run to, to hide. This decree about us being killed is the decree is Shaykh to every single province. Right? There's nowhere out. We are like a flock that has no shepherd. This is amazing. I never saw this before. They took out a Sefer Torah that was covered in a sack, in a, uh, like a cloth, and it was basically Megulal Be'efer. It was... What's that? It was covered. It was covered with dirt. 
וקראו בו, בצר לך ומצאוך כל הדברים האלה באחרית הימים, ושבת את השם אלוקיך ושמרת בקולו. What part is that? That's the end of the Torah, it's in Nitzavim. They took out the Torah, the piece of the Torah where it says, when you find yourself surrounded and consumed by tzaras, and you have no idea what to do, ושבת את השם אלוקיך. You just come back home to Abba, in Shemaim. That's what they read in the streets of Shushan Abira, when they took out a Sefer Torah that was covered in sack, in, 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 in afar, in dust. But now this is the point. והעת לעורר על נקודה דקה בעניין עבודת התפילה. This gives us an opportunity to point out something very important when it comes to the whole avoda of davening. שהנה, אם נשאל אדם, איך היה ישוע בימי מרדכי ואסתר? If we ask a person, how did it come about that there was a salvation in the time of Mordechai ve'Esther? Al Pirov, most people would say that the smartest thing would say, Yeh muskal rishon lomar, sh'ayishuah itchila al yedeh sh'zimna Esther et haman lamishte. You would say, well, how did, it, how did the Yeshua begin? Esther invited Haman to her own feast, to her own mishte. Like if you look at the, at the order, the chain of events, you would say that's how the Yeshua began, that Esther invited Haman to a Mishta. And then from there, things, things you know, itgalgelu. Ach be'emet, ha'kol haya ach v'rak al yidei koach ha'tfila. But that's not true. That is not true, meaning that is a piece of the chain of what brought to a Yeshua. It's true. That was a vital moment. In the story, but that is not how the Yeshua began. The, tru- the Yeshua began only with started al de Koach Atfila. She bene Israel zaku la Shemit Barach, vit Hanenuelav le Havira at Amana Agagi. We were crying and screaming for this horrible Eitzah to be removed. Veshama Shemit Kolam, vena Sala Emnes, and Hashem heard their voice and a miracle was made for them. וכמו כן, זוהי העצה הייעוצה לכל אחד ואחד בכל עת צרה וצוקה. Now this is a very important thing. And it is much harder, it's much easier said than done. This is very hard to remember when you need to remember the following thing. Listen very closely. At any time, בכל עת צרה וצוקה, no matter what you're going through, when it seems like there's a constraint, a bilbul, a, a need for you to emerge, a need, a need for you to appear, a need for you to be smart. A need for you to be smart. That's really the thing. When there's a need for you to mamish, be smart about something. He says here something, Maritik, something unbelievable. Don't start doing anything. Before you come to any tachbula, tachbula means a tactic. Before you come up with any tactics, we like to say in Piyasetzna language, Tachbula means a hack, mm-hmm. a trick, tactics. Like it says in the Pasuk, it says, mm-hmm. That when it comes to war, you, gotta, you have to be strategically smart. You got to be full of tactics, of hacks, of tricks. He says, Before any hishtadlut v'tachbula shosim, before you figure it out and you use your brain, which you have to, just like Esther did. She used her brain in the most incredible way. Did you guys see any of the pieces of footage of Chayalim right in the beginning of this war before they went out to Krav doing Mishaberachs? Did you ever see anything holier in your life? Ever. The Chayalim that are doing Mishaberachs and bringing upon themselves the awareness that what they need to do right now is to cry out to Hashem, to be there for Him in His midst, in their midst. And then, all the tachbulot were implemented. Rav Kluger is saying, eat this, so there's even, they already did it late because we were caught, Hashem is Barach, we were caught, Hashem Yerachim Aleinu, we were caught off guard. He's saying, even before you go to the, to the board, even before you open up maps, even before you start to think about the tachlis of, oh, this needs to be like, before any of that, you're stuck, you know you need to figure things out. 
before you let your mind be the one that says, I'm going to determine how to get us out of here, a yid doesn't do that. A yid first starts, Reshit kol davar yishpoch siach lifnei Hashem izbarach. No. We start by crying. Before anything. Before anything. We start by speaking, by crying to their bonus lunam. V'yeda v'yamin. Sheba'emet rak mikoach zeh. It's only from this merit. Yizke l'yishua s'ashem k'fi she'elach no'od le'el s'pasad chet. He already spoke about this quite intensely before. But he says, we already, we, already, we already explained this. This is how it works. This is Seder Ha'inyanim. This is the way things go. And if you look at Megillat Esther, and you see how the Psukim progress there, you see exactly what we're talking about. Mamash, mamash kacha. V'yesh od lit bonen b'zeh. And he says, he's going to show us this halachically as well. This is fascinating. Yesh od lit bonen b'zeh. Shere yidu ha-shita seramban. Shetfila d'oraisa. Okay, this is a very famous machlokas rishonim that has to do with is davening the oraisa or not, or is it derabanan? It's a famous machlokas Rambam Ramban, and uh, other other rishonim as well share a lot on this. And even those that say that fila is the oraisa, that it's actually from the Torah that you have to daven, the Ramban does a diuk there, and he says. The, the chiyuv of davening from the Torah is only at a specific time. When is it? Be'ez tzara. So, Breslovers aren't happy with this because they'd want to feel that's the only time I'm yotzei chiyuv d'oraisa is only when I'm, when I, when I'm in b'tzara. I, sh- I, I should feel that it's a chiyuv d'oraisa also when I'm b'simcha. But the Ramban says no, and he has a whole tai he has a whole, the way he brings it down, is, it's not for now. Shetfila d'oraisa yidaika be'ez tzara. Now, just skip over here until the end of these brackets over here. Ve'ine bechol zman bayit rishon. You see where it is? Ve'ine bechol zman bayit rishon. Haya l'klal Yisrael milchamot u'kshayim. Now this is, sheds a lot of light on something we, 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 we've been learning quite often. Is that during bayit rishon, as much as we say the shechina was there, and it was such a gilui, everything was revealed, it was all light, the... There was no, never such a prosperous time like it was in the time of Shlomo Melech, Bayit Rishon, the But throughout the whole time of Bayit Rishon, Hayali Klal Yisrael Milchamot Ukshayim, we were filled with Itei Tzara. There were a bunch of moments that it was very, very, very hard. Just like they're going to write about our days, that the first, you know, Tkufa of living in Eretz Yisrael in the beginning of Atchalta de Geula was also filled with a bunch of Piguim and attempts to kill us, they're going to write the same thing. But you know how it's going to go down, this Tkufa? Just like we look back at Bayit Rishon and said, that was the time there was a Beis HaMikdash. This time is also going to go down as, that was the time Am Yisrael was back home. The, the, the fact that there was all this pain and piguin and suffering are going to be, they'll be, I don't know if they'll be footnotes, but that's not going to be the way that this is going to be remembered when Mashiach comes. Bezrat Hashem. בין בכל זמן בית רישון היה לי כלל ישראל מלחמות וקשיים, אך כל זמן שאדם נתון באדמתו ובנחלתו, עדיין אין זה נחשב בשלמות כעת צרה. This, this blew me away. Rav Kluger is pointing something out here. He's saying, as long as, as no matter what you're going through, but you're where you're supposed to be, which means home, as long as you're home, כל זמן שאדם נתון באדמתו ובנחלתו, as long as you are where you're supposed to be, which is Admat Eretz HaKodesh, Eretz Yisrael, it's not considered, doesn't fall under the category that the Ramban says would be a mitzvah saseh d'oraisa of a chiyuv of davening. Adain ein ze nechshav b'shlemut ke'et sara. You can't say it's, it's like an et sara, like the Ramban was speaking about. V'ikara et sara, because what is et sara really referring to? Hu ka'asher ha'adam gole mimkomo ve'eneno miyushav b'da'ato. Because an et, listen to this, open your hearts, this is very important. And it stinks also, and you'll see what I mean in a second. This stinks. He says like this, the ikar, to, to, to define something as an et sara, is when you don't have das. Now, when do you usually not have das? What, is he, what did he basically say? When does a person have a lack of dat? 
when they're not home. When they're not home, and he, he proves it from Rabbi Nachman right now, from Likutei Maran. But when you're not home, you don't have that. Golemim komo, golemi daato. That's what he's bringing. That's what he's bringing down. So therefore, he said, he's saying the whole time of Bait. When does the story of Purim take place? Between, right? Between Bait Rishon and Bait Sheni. In fact, we know exactly what year it was too, because of the miscalculation of what happened. Nachon. So as much as we may have had difficulty during Bait Rishon times. It didn't fall into the category of Eitzara because we were still where we were supposed to be. So you can't say it's a fully Eitzara. Here they find themselves in a place that they have nowhere to run to. It's not where they're supposed to be. It's a state of Golus, which means there's no dot. It fell under the category fully of Eitzara. Yeah, Zahra. This was all by... We weren't all here. This is all by Rishon, what we said. Right. Well, everything we said right now, Antona. By Cheney didn't happen yet until after the story of Purim. Right. This yeah, is go- is when we're all here? He, 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 he didn't, that's interesting. He doesn't say that. He just says, where you're caught, where you, as in, to me, it so seems like the you, the individual, where you're at, it seems like it. Okay? It's a good question. It's a good deal with what you're saying. Meaning. Well, I, well, I think that I understand what you're saying by asking. Three months now, and there really was no doubt. Like you could see that the mother came out from where. From the Golan. Oh, from. And from you Golan. could see that she couldn't get her kids together. She could like. There really was no doubt. I guess you're saying it's like it blows my mind. But yet, I'm in my house, so like I was able to continue my life. I was able to. So that's what I'm wondering if it's like a, a, a an individual thing, or if it's like the. You know, I so relate to it because we've been we've been uh, living somewhere else for a month, and during Shiputzim, I'm I'm everything's there. Ramaj, I'm losing my mind. I don't, I don't have my, I'm actually not losing it because it's not there. <laughs> and uh, and I, don't under, I don't even understand why I'm losing, like why I feel so, but it's the same in Yan, right? He didn't, he didn't get into that chiluk, but it's very easy to, to see that it can be an awesome individual level as well. Right? Also just to say that it's not a physical thing, it's a metaphysical thing, it's more like a spiritual thing. Well here, that, it's, that is true in its etzim, but here he's actually pointing out well, that the Yudim found themselves in Shushan Abira. And they're like, okay, in past times when there was eight Sarah, see, all these Yidin were in the Beis HaMikdash. They knew it. Was. Mordechai was in the Beis HaMikdash, right? All these Yidin knew. They, Mordechai was from Anshei Knesset HaGdola. You know, Mordechai was part of establishing how we daven today. With the Takanot of Anshei Knesset HaGdola. They, these people were in er, in Eretz Yisrael that had itot tzara, but they said, but something here is different. Okay, so obviously the obvious thing is the decree <laughs> is a different decree than whatever hardship they had, but that also mifchinat hadat, they knew I'm not where I'm supposed to be. So I, I, I can't even function properly. It's that, more physical. It's more here, physical. He, in, in, yeah, but, but what you said is true, meaning it's also true kamuvan, Spiritually as well. Now look, he, now he quotes from Rabbi Nachman. Ukmoshe katub likutei mo'aran, this is likutei mo'aran, kuf mem alef, the 141st teaching, ah, sorry, no, likutei kama kama samechei, that means the first part of likutei mo'aran, the 65th teaching. Ach ikar atzar sheyesh la'adam ma'yisurim she'ovrim alav chas v'shon, hu rak machmat she'lokchin me'adam da'at. What really lies beneath someone's painful experience in this world is not the experience, uh, not really the experience itself, it's the da'at that you feel was taken from you while you're going through the experience. You know how deep that is? That's the deep, that's, it's unbelievably deep. Why? Because if a person can go through hell but they're going through hell with da'at, which means focused on the purpose of it, you can go through anything. It's not that what you're going through becomes enjoyable. That's not what he's saying either. And I don't connect to those words, you know. Uh, it's that I, I don't, I don't, I, it's not, 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 it
those words of like, the height would be, is if you're on such a high level that you know everything from Hashem, so you dance into the gas chamber. I don't understand, like, I, I can't do anything with that, even though I know it happened. I know these stories happened. But for me, he, what he says over here is, if a person has that, which means when you have that, you keep your eye on the prize. You keep your eye on the tachlit of this world. You keep your eye on the purpose of this world. If you're able to maintain that through any tsar or yisurim, the way that you experience is that you don't feel at all the tsar of the yisurim. Doesn't mean that what happens is beautiful and good. It may not be enjoyable, but you're not experiencing the painful side of the experience because you're keeping your eye on the... Listen, Achaya, and we have just, we have so many examples in the last few months of people that have mamash shown us exactly what this teaching is. Where does it come from? How does a person consciously choose to walk into fire because they know that that is the tachlit of life? It's to la'agen al-am Yisrael be'eretz Yisrael. Where else have you and I experienced that in our lifetime and as, as a conscious decision of people? It's not to be believed. So the Rebbe says here, Rebbe Nachman says again, כשיש לו דעת, הוא מסתכל על התכלית, אינו מרגיש כלל הצער של הייסורים. And in the beginning of this מלחמה, we learned the most incredible piece from Maharam Rotenberg that described that he gave, there was an edus given by someone that heard in his name that when a person's killed al Kiddush Hashem, remember we learned this? They don't feel any physical pain whatsoever. That void went out, I have to tell you. I got so many calls from Horim Shkunim around the country that, got, that, that heard about the Shir, and they needed to, they trusted me, but they needed to see it inside, and I had the Makar. I was able to, sh- to send it to them. And I think like that Torah also is the same thing even for, of course it's painful beyond words, Shelo Neda, but when the Tachlit when the da'at doesn't leave me, I, my, my way of going through the pain is something completely, completely different. Bemakom acher, the bottom of you, bemakom acher katav, nachmu, nachmu, ami. Rabbi Nachman says on the words, nachmu, nachmu, ami. Kol hatsarot vayisurim vagalut eino ela lefi erech chisrona da'at. Lack of da'at, lack of da'at, determines how much the pain that you're going through is actually going to be painful. And when a person's dat is there and it's complete, so anything that's lacking stops being lacking. It's all filled. Like it says in the Gemara and the in dat kanita ma'achasarta. If you've acquired dat in this world, then what are you lacking? It's interesting that he's not using the word chokhmah. You realize that? Mm-hmm. He keeps on saying dat. What's the difference between dat and chokhmah? Connection. Huh? Connection. Connection to the intellect that you've acquired, to whatever level of intellect you've acquired. Dat, not chokhmah. You could be the biggest chacham in the world, <coughs> and you could have zero connection to it. Dat, milashon ve'adam yadat chava'ishto, means that I am connected to that which I know. I'm connected. I could know the purpose of life, and I could also be connected to the purpose of life. And those are two completely different worlds. And the Lashon of Da'at, the first time it shows up in the Torah, comes by Adam and Chava, but Adam yada'at Chava ishto. What do you think? Oh, he, he knew that she's his wife? No, Rashi tells us right there. Da'at means intimacy, connection, chibur. We learned a beautiful Torah in the... It's tough to say it here because it, it fits in so perfectly. It says, uh, Rav Biederman brought down that the famous Medrash that says that Hashem told Moshe Rabbeinu, Matana tova yeshli bevez genazai u Shabbat Shema. I have the most wonderful gift for Yidin. It's in my treasure chest. It's called Shabbos. Lech vehodiem. Go and let them know about this. So it's a beautiful, just saying those words is beautiful. It doesn't need any tosafot. But Rav Biederman was saying that every single Shabbos, when it says, Yismach Moshe Matnat Chelko, we say Shabbos morning, Moshe rejoices in his portion. What's his portion? Letting Yidin know every single week that Shabbos is coming. But Rav Biederman said a gavat. 
what's the Lashon of the Midrash? Lech vehodiem. That means go and go and connect go and connect them to Shabbos. Not go and let them know that it's Shabbos. Go and connect them. For Moshe Rabbeinu, that's the greatest matana he could ever have. That his thing in this world is to come to every Jew, lech vehodiem. That means any dat that was lacking in their lives, Moshe Rabbeinu was mashlim that. He does it to us every single, the Shaila, if it's right before Shabbos or Kabbalah Shabbos, whatever, it doesn't matter. But that's why we keep on, we keep on coming back to the word, dat kanita, dat, dat kanita machasarta. Uchtiv, third line on the top of the left column, brought down in Yeshaya Navi, Lachen gala ami mibli dat. Therefore, he's coming to say over here, Galut nullifies, cancels out that. Like the example that Zahava gave. So now we're speaking very individually. You feel all the things that could be painful in your life, when there's no dot, they suddenly appear. You know how many things could be hurting you right now? I'm not trying to, Khalila, you understand what I'm saying. Do you know how many things could actually be hurting us right now? Why don't all the things that could be hurting us right now, how come they're not hurting us? Based on this. Because we have a certain level of that. That's the only thing. Because we have a certain level of that. The azai, but when you're not like that, tfila be'et sarad de oraita bishlemut. But when you're in Galus and you're davening from that place, it's it says it's basically saying, even according to the Ramban, it would be considered a moment of et sarah where you'd have a chiyuv de'oraisa from the Torah to daven. So now let's go out of the text right now. You think it really boils down to Eretz Yisrael, not Eretz Yisrael? Mm. Not at all. Not at all. Because you could be here in the place you're supposed to be and have no das. Have no dat. It's possible. We see it all the time. We see it all the time. We feel it all the time. Was, was it? We feel it all We feel the lack of dat all the time. Right. The, we feel a lack of even though I know I'm in the right place. It's like, it's not, it doesn't work. It's like, I'm in the right place. So the way, he, the way he taught this whole piece is just mind-boggling because what he's saying over here is that if you find yourself in a state of galus adas, that means you have, you don't have that, and you feel the et sarah, at that moment, there'd be a chiyuv do raisa on you to daven. Bishlemus. Completely. You should understand for halachists, for halachic minds, this is like, this is like a beautiful binyan of understanding, chiyuv doraisa, chiyuv tefillah in our times. But even not for non halachic minds, if it's more esoteric minds, or even more just you know, looking at the ruach of things, like we have to make kabel that the story that Esther Amalka, from Mordechai and Esther, that it's teaching us is that. Davening is the strongest das that a person could have in this world. Because davening takes you out of galut at that moment that you're davening. When you're really in prayer, there is no galut. When you're really, you know what's amazing about real tefillah? You could go into a tefillah session, he's pointed a session, with a lot of different things on your list of the things you're crying for that you need so badly in life. But when you set yourself free from that, and you start to get the thing rolling, and it's really a siach between you and the Ribbon Shalom. It's not that suddenly all those things were solved, but what suddenly happens to you when you're in a world of tefillah? All those things that were hurting you and that you thought you need in order for things to be good end up not being the things that I need in order for things to be good. Because it brings me closer to the tachlit in this world, which means I have more dat which means that I'm pulling myself out of a place of galut. And this is why Aika Reb Nachman says the, the, world, the world says that davening is an important thing. 
He says, by me, it is the most important thing in the world. Tfilah lakel chayai. I dive into Hashem so I actually know what it means to be alive. Not to have things and not have things. Ve'alken, go back inside. Ve'alken, rak bizman Mordechai ve'ester, matzinu kazit surah shel tfilah. Only in the time, the story of the Purim Megillah, we see this surah of davening, this shape of davening. Ve'chai gavna she'konsin et kol klal Yisrael ke'echad. Everyone's gathered together as one. So here's the Hava. It has to do with the klal, right? This is what they're doing today. Huh? This, this is, is what, what they're doing today. Yeah, but this is what you're going to be doing in a few minutes, man. This is what, you know, I had to say, it. there have been so many of these, like, everyone's going to say the same thing at a certain you know, time, right? It's got to be deeper than that. I don't know what deeper means like that, but it's, it's happened so many times. It means any opportunity you have, you use to, to, to daven. See, those Yidin that went down to, they were in Shushan, they, most of them, I guess the ones that were still alive, I don't know what the age, uh, know, the average age was back then, but most of them were still in Eretz Yisrael, they knew that they're going to go back to Eretz Yisrael. That's how the whole bilbul happened about eating at the Seudah of Achashverosh. What was the simcha about? That the prophecy about when we're going to go back to Eretz Yisrael didn't end up happening because of a miscalculation of 70 years. Sounds familiar about miscalculations? What other time was there a miscalculation that led... Huh? Chet Ha'egel, son of the golden calf. Again, a miscalculation which led to a complete chisaron adat. Same thing. Ach ka'et, shenira she'avar katsir, kala ka'itz v'adayim lo nushu. Here they found themselves in like uh, the equivalent of Moshe Rabbeinu is not coming down from Shemaim. Now it's happening to us again. Now in Shushan, and the time that I was supposed to be, it's supposed to be over and go back, hasn't happened. Ve'od yoter, davka az hitraksha lehem agzera shel aman. And not just did it not happen that they didn't go back to Eretz Yisrael, Add on to the miscalculation this Amalekite that tells us you're all going to die. You're all going to die. Ve'az haya tokef agalut ve'ayet sara kfi shelo haya me'az ayu Yisrael le'am. The darkness, the confusion, and the concealment was stronger, more than, than it ever was to Am Yisrael as a people. Therefore, we see over there that the Et Sara was felt so strongly because of Chisaron Hadat, because of lacking Dat. So now, I just want to end this and tie it into, into where we are today, until we find ourselves today. You know, it's, we've gotten used to living... Um, with many different illusions in our lives, many different types of illusions, on many different levels, in many different areas, different things for different people, the chulei. Um, and the reason that we don't speak about a lot of these things is because we want to make people feel secure and safe and good, and that things are going to be good, right? But there's still a very non-embarrassed Haman today in the world that wants to do the same exact thing that Haman did, the difference is they're living in Eretz Yisrael in our backyard. They live all around us, everywhere here, all of them. (coughs) Chesron Hadat doesn't just mean that I can't find myself. Chesron Hadat, it seems to me, also means a certain acceptance of living out of a state in Gullahs. In Eretz Yisrael, it's a million times worse. See, in Shushan, it's Shushan, it's Persia. I don't expect the streets there to be, you know, filled with, with you know, ch- beautiful children singing uh, good morning in all different languages to all humanity. I, I, it's, it's Shushan, right? I don't expect that in New York, I don't expect it in Los Angeles. I don't expect it anywhere, but I do expect it here in Eretz Yisrael, and I want it here in Eretz Yisrael, and I want it so badly here in Eretz Yisrael. 
But we are we are in a much more in the pnimius of things, not on the outside. You see, Hashem is putting nace after nace every single day, right around here in our area, just this morning in El Azar. Non stop. But in the pnimius of things, Hashem is saying, I feel like he's screaming out to us and saying, What are you willing to Bamash let go of that's been protecting you? When really it's not really protected. It really hasn't really protected you. It's just an ashlaya of protection. It's just an illusion of protection. Meaning there's this galut hadad that we have, but it's been a, it's been a, a totza'a of just trying to make ourselves feel better and protected. There's an achon. When the premius of things, it's not. The MS is, are we in an etzara right now? Yeah, what, what, what has stopped us from saying that uh, before some <coughs> The illusion. The illusion. You're fine. Yeah? Do, is, everyone, is everyone kind of flowing with that? Mm-hmm. Like, today I'm saying it's an etzara because the ratzon of the behema is galui. But really, but has anything changed? Is there any difference at all on any level? Was there suddenly like a... Uh, a mind shift, Bekerev, Uchlusiei, Ishmael, Mapitom. Well, I guess the fact that the world is holding a magnifying glass over it helps that a little bit. But nothing, but in its so, makor, that's the question, in its makor, nothing's changed. That means, how long have we been in Etzara? It's the destruction yeah. of the first place in Egypt. That's <laughs> what we're trying to say. <laughs> it, it, more, exactly. A Yehudi without the Beit HaMikdash is in an etzara. That's exactly the point. A Jew without the headquarters of Da'at is in an etzara. And over the years, we get the opportunity, every, every I don't know how many years, to have that atzraya bi menupatz, you pop that bubble, and you realize, wow, with all the nice shuls and schools and community centers we've built, Without the Beis HaMikdash, I'm always going to be in a state of Etzara. That's exactly the point. So therefore, Tani's Esther should not be used only that it would be so degrading, in my humble opinion, if Tani's Esther was used just so, the tefillahs of Tani's Esther are just so, Hashem, um, make this stop that we're in right now. You hear? It's the whole thing. And we keep on speaking about this, but based on Migdash energy, the whole thing. The whole thing. And remember that when based on Migdash will come and the, our children are going to ask us, tell us, how did, how did it end up happening? Right? And you start telling a story about, well, then, well, basically, the sergeants of the, you know, the army... And then we had architects, and suddenly all these different pieces of wood showed up from... No. It started like Esther Amalka's Yeshua begins, really from davening, and only then everything else happens. So Tomeret, be open to the notion that the building of the Beis HaMikdash and the story of the real Geula has not begun yet. In, in, a, in our own approach to davening. Because I want to say that like you said, only after the tefillah, the real cry for being connected to our tachlit and not just being removed from moments of pain. And I remember that. That is hashlama of that. And that is the p'tichat sharim for a story called Binyan Beis HaMikdash HaShlishi. So therefore, like it's my, uh, no pressure, because everyone has to do whatever they have to do today. It's Erev Purim v'chulei. And no pressure on people's feelings of davening because we learned this week and on Tuesday night the, 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 from Moshe, it's about the Aleph Zi'ira. Every single thing you do is precious, even if it's not the deepest kamana. But Tani says there's a day that's Yotzeh Min It's different. And the tefillah should be Bezat Hashem, that you should believe so much in your tefillahs. Bishos Nashim Tzadkanias that are coming out to learn on a fast day that are that want so badly to be able to tell their children we we were willing to remove all the fake, all the facades, all the, all the um, delusional masks that we thought were really protecting us for the sake of a better future or whatever. 
and to be able to go right into the heart of the Tachlis, and that is that we've been in a state of Eitzara from the moment that we've been in Galut. That's exactly what he said over here. <coughs> and that we really, really need to le'orer mitocha amar atzon, it's when we daven, to go way beyond just davening, to get out of the moments of, of, of horrible things that we're, gonna, that, that we're experiencing right now. But that it should be in the schus of our holy and precious chatufim and chatufot, that they arouse within us a passion to daven like never before, a passion to have more dat like never before, and a passion to be focused on the tachlit, on the purpose of the whole story of Am Yisrael and Hashem like never before, and this all comes in the Shorish of Esther HaMalka. And only then she starts to do the tactics of inviting Haman, the Chule. It starts from V'tzumu Alai, V'al Tochlu, V'al Tishtu, Shloshet Yamim, Laila Vayom, Gamani, V'narotai, Atzum Ken. And remember the Torah that we said two years ago from Reb Mordechai Eliyahu. The Pasuk Batani says to is very strange. She says, Tzumu Alai, and then she says, Al Tochlu, V'al Tishtu. So the question is, she already said, she already said fast. Why does she then have to say, and don't eat and don't drink? Isn't that what fasting means? So Mordechai said a gavat. He said an amazing thing. He said, she took upon herself basically a tiny zdibur, her and the girls. The fasting that she refers to first was that she's only going to use her mouth for diburim of tefillah for those three days. So, you know, we just have a day that today could be kula mukdash, the level of fasting. We fast from using lashon that doesn't need to be said. Tan, on a level of tanit dibur, together with the fasting, the, the, the Yeshua, Bezrat Hashem, is right there. And Bezrat Hashem, this Purim really, like everyone, everyone's been saying, this Purim is like no other. It's true, but the way that tone is, we want to say it differently. It's true, this is a Purim like we've never experienced before. And we're going to speak about that tonight. But the, the point is to come out of this Purim and saying, this was a Purim like never before. Not to stay in the same place of, okay, I think we did as good as we could for this Purim. That's, that's Golos Adas. That's still a Golos Dika Purim. So, Bezrat Hashem, we should see. Alanisi Manoni Flot, Bezrat Hashem. Shkayach, everyone.